I just have to say, this is my first TED Talk. I'm super excited. Um, and I have a tendency to talk a little bit quickly, so I'll try to keep that under control, helpful to you. Um, and I want to start with a bold, kind of a bold for me, a bold um, quote, which is around ignorance. And I believe that one of the strongest strengths we have, and this is coming from an academic, is our ability to access our ignorance. So strongest skill set we have currently and ones we're going to need in the future. And our ability to actually find the small things. So thinking small. I was always taught, taught to think big, but to actually think small. And I think that's important. And coming from an academic, I do both teaching and research. And on the research end, ignorance has always been at the forefront of research, not knowing. We don't know things. So we want to find those out. So we might have a hypothesis we want to test. We might actually just want to watch something and try to find out what that could possibly be. So that's one piece, is the research piece. The teaching piece, and I really want to, I really want to talk about this for a second, is because um, I'm passionate about teaching and the work that I do here at Dalhousie in terms of teaching. Um, I don't think that we're, we're, we're leveraging what we can. So with a lot of my students, I want them to access their ignorance. I don't want to know what the right answer is. And one of the reasons I don't want to know what the right answer is is because the question I'm asking is so complex, it has so many moving pieces, there is no right answer. So to actually learn, and for some of us it's unlearn, so I was brought up to what is the right answer, the way I was tested was always have a right answer, the way that we uh, are assessed in terms of rubrics and those types of things. At this time of the world, with all the com complex problems we're having from how do you raise resilient children to uh, you know, how do you solve world poverty, how do you deal with gender issues, um, how do we create a better mental health system across Canada, those are complex, complex issues, and we need our ignorance to do that. So I'm going to do a very dangerous thing here, and I'm going to ask you if I can trigger your ignorance. So 450 people, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to trigger it. I'm going to do it through a problem. So those people who know more about this problem will actually have a harder time accessing their ignorance because they think they pretty well know all the pieces to it. Those people who don't know anything about the problem will have an easy access to your ignorance. So this is what the case is. We want to buy, I have endless money, we want to buy a winning NBA team, National Basketball Association. A show of hands if people know what I'm talking about, NBA teams. Who's got a favorite team? Raise your hand. Awesome. Okay. So we want to buy one of those winning teams. So your thinking has already started. I have endless money. I'm engaging you. We're going to come up with a decision to buy a team. Some of the things that I think you're probably thinking in your head would be, um, let's look at the players. Um, let's look at their stats. Look at, let's look at their trends. What would the experts say? Those types of things. So two researchers actually took this problem on and said, what if we didn't know anything? What if we were ignorant and we just kind of watched? So one of the things they did is they went out and they videotaped uh, early game plays for all of the NBA. So they went out and videotaped. What do you think they found? What's the small thing that they found that probably many people in this room would not even think about that actually leads to winning teams? Not only winning teams, but winning individuals. Anybody want to shout something out? What? Being Golden State. What was yours? Arm Timeline? Arm oh, arm length. No, not arm length. Good. That's, that's kind of thinking out of the box. That's kind of like accessing your ignorance. It was touch. Did you hear me? Touch. The players that touched each other appropriately, a touch, touched, <laughs> touched each other. The players that actually touched each other more. So head bonks, fist, fist pumps, those types of things. Those are the people, the teams, and the individual players that did the best, the people that touched the most. That's accessing ignorance. That's finding solutions to things that are complex. So I hope that starts to trigger your ignorance. We're going to spend the next, kind of, I don't know, 12, 10 or 12 minutes talking about that. But that's the place I'm going. Touch is a fairly small thing. So two things that are, that are great is that if you look at things like touch, it's free, there's an endless supply of it. If you look at your ignorance, there's a free, endless supply of it. We just have to access it to trigger it, because in it is solutions to all of the problems and all the things we've been talking about. So that piece, is, I think, is really important in terms of understanding that often the solution we're looking for, we can't even think about because we've been accessed our ignorance. We haven't just said, I don't know. So one of the quickest ways to access your ignorance is to say, I don't know, or what if everything I knew about it wasn't everything there is to know about it? So those two pieces. So with that, right, with that, um, we talked about the NBAs. I'm going to have you take the touch challenge if you want. So a small thing that you can do here at the TEDx, if you want to touch the person next to you, I would ask them first. Um, you, something collective will happen here. 
You will be more aware and you will learn differently by touching the person next to you. That could be your hand on their arm. That could be you holding their hand. That could be all sorts of stuff. I think that guy just stood up and thought he might get a date out of this. Um, <laughs> yes, somebody perked up. Um, so you can take the touch challenge if you want. You can even just fist pump somebody next to you, get to know somebody. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So um, that's a big piece. The next thing I want to talk about is the types of problems we have. So we have simple problems. Simple problems are things that you can solve. Everybody can solve them. We know the answer to them. I got a cat last week, and one of the things I realized is when, when she cries, she's hungry. That is an easy problem to fix. I just open a can and feed her. Um, if I want to make a cake, I realize that I can just go into my cupboard, pull out a box, follow the recipe, put it in the oven. And in most cases, if we all made the same cake with the same mix, it would be the same cake. So the problems are solved because we know the answers. Don't have to, uh, get, we don't have to kind of access our ignorance. Um, the next step of problems are complicated. Complicated problems can look quite large, so putting a space... How many people think putting something on Mars would be complex or complicated? Complicated. How many people show hands complicated? 50-50 chance of getting this one right. Perfect, yes. It is complicated, because complicated problems we still don't need a lot of our ignorance because we have experts that can solve those problems. We have experts in propulsion, we have experts in NASA, we've got experts in gravitational forces and all those types of things. They can solve those problems. Complex problems, the NBA basketball, those problems, we don't know what the answer is. It has too many moving parts, too many moving pieces. We don't know why teams win. And so one of the small things we could start thinking about is the teams, if I had a team, if I could get them to touch each other more, collaborate more, feel friendly with each other more, both individually and on a team basis, they would probably start winning. So one of the things to think about is the type of problems that you have. So that would be complex problems. I'm going to share two stories. One story is in 1943. Um, there are a number of people here. I shouldn't say that. No, never mind. Um, <laughs> never mind. Uh, World War II, and they were looking for rubber. So they're trying to make rubber because rubber is being used in the war and they need synthetic rubber. So General Electric says, OK, we'll take that and we'll try to make something. What they made bounced, was waterproof, it stretched like, but it stretched a long way. So they couldn't figure out anything to do with it, and it wasn't rubber, so they really couldn't use it. So they sent, for years and years, this product to scientists around the world to try to figure out what to do with it. Then they gave it to a random person who was truly accessing his ignorance, and he just took it, and he took it with him wherever he went, and he happened to go to a dinner party. So as he was at the dinner party, his friends played with it, bounced it, stretched it, did all sorts of stuff with it. And it came to him that this product that they've been trying to figure out a use for, for years scientists have been figuring out a use for it, actually turns out to be Silly Putty. And one of the hottest selling toys for years and years and years. Who's played with Silly Putty? Yes. I still have some, actually. Um, so that piece is really important because through that, we can understand um, lots of things. Small things make a big difference. Accessing ignorance, taking it away out of the hands of scientists, giving it to random people. Um, the other one is a, is a company in the States, and I'm doing research personally in the world of uh, healthcare and partially in um, emergency departments. So if you've been in an emergency department, you can wait a fairly long time. So through that wait, there's got to be ways to speed that up. So what they did, and they, it's a company, a design company in the States that specializes in going into areas like this where they know nothing. Their whole secret is they know nothing. So they went in. And one of the interesting things they did was they actually took cameras, because they know nothing, and put cameras on the heads of all the patients. What do, well, then they rolled all the film back, so hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of film. What do you think they found? What do you think they saw on the video? You thinking? You accessing your ignorance? Lots of they were people. They saw lots of the ceiling, endless, endless footage of the ceiling. So if you had information to put for patients, where would you put it? On the ceiling. Yes, that's very good. Yes, that was a good one. It's a good catch. Yes, you put it on the ceiling. So talking about problems, we're talking about accessing ignorance. And can we find small things? Those are small things we could do. We could put it on the ceiling, so small things. Could we actually take that and do something with it? Yes. Let's talk about ignorance for a while. So there are many books that have been written, and I found this out, on ignorance. So I didn't realize there's, a, there's actually a first book of ignorance. There's a second book of ignorance. There's willful ignorance. There is uh, don't punish your ignorance, let it shine. There is uh, ignorance, it drives science, which it truly does, ignorance truly does drive science. So there are, if you want to read after you leave tonight, there's tons of books to read about ignorance. 
Um, if you want to talk about types of ignorance, I want you to think about yourself and the people around you in terms of types of ignorance. Um, there is innocent ignorance. I have twins that are nine, and uh, I see a lot of innocent ignorance. They don't have the experience. They don't have the knowledge. Um, people call it charming. I call it something else. Um, <laughs> then there is willful ignorance, and those are people. Think about the people in your lives and the people around you. Um, where people are sticking to what they believe. Even in the face of other information and other opportunities, they are willfully not going there. They're sticking with the data they have. There's arrogant ignorance, which I think we probably all have experienced at some time in our life, where that know-it-all person it believes they truly know something about everything. Um, there's domain ignorance, which is about people who know one thing very, very deeply. And because they know that, they then think that they know everything about everything else. And then probably the most important for tonight is around useful, or actually I've heard it called enlightened, I actually quite like enlightened, useful ignorance. And those are the people in the room like you today that actually have problems in their lives. And they're doing certain things, but it's not solving the problem. It's a complex problem and it's not being solved. So that's where you want to use the ignorance I'm talking about, useful, enlightened ignorance. And probably the most ignorant person that I found was Einstein. And he said it himself. He actually said, I don't have any special talents, but what I do have is this intense, unbelievable passion for curiosity. So he believed that curiosity, which is the forerunner of ignorance, his not knowing. And by doing a couple simple things, asking a couple different questions, that's how he accessed it, through curiosity, through asking what if, what if this happened? Um, asking himself, I don't know about this. Um, the answering the question, I don't know. He came to his theory of relativity. How many people know the story of the theory of relativity? I won't spend a lot of time here, I promise. Um, good. So how he figured it out was he simply imagined what it would be like, what would transpire if he wrote a beam of light. That's it. Didn't cost, he didn't have billions of dollars of labs. He didn't have all that kind of stuff. What would transpire? If you look at Newton, Newton's big question about gravity when the, when the apple dropped was simply... Um, it wasn't just that the apple dropped. His true question was, why does the apple fall and the moon doesn't? And that got us into gravitational theory. Bring it up to present day, Crick and Watson um, have questions around, what would DNA look like in 3D form? So it's your ability to ask questions. So I want you to think right now about things that you have going on in your life, whatever those would be. Um, are you accessing your ignorance around those? Are you trying things that aren't working to the way that you think that they should work? Are you not getting the results that you think you want? And if that's the case, then this whole talk about ignorance and finding the small things. So in those cases, um, you know, they're, they're, we, can, we can find small things. And as we're talking about small things, um, small things are good because they're connected. So one of the reasons it works is because we can find something really small and it's connected to something else. So I want to kind of take the end of this talk and I want to talk about cups, I'm going to talk about counters, and I want to talk about fulfilling relationships. Who'd be interested in a long-term fulfilling relationship? You married people shouldn't say that. You should say you already have it. Um, so if we talked about counters, again, problem, big uh, department store wants to make lots of money. The ground floor, which is cosmetics, where they make tons of money, they hired lots of companies to come in and give them things like they should renovate and they should redo things, have to have marketing strategies, have to have advertising strategies. Another person comes in and said, why don't you just move these three counters? So if you've been into big department stores like that, um, trying to find the escalator is a nightmare, but there's a reason, because that maze, where you're hunting through all that maze of stuff, you actually buy. They increase profits by 200% by moving a couple counters. Cups, 30 years ago, somebody finally got the technology that you can actually print on the cup all the way up to the rim. Where am I going with this? Roll up the rim. That's what, ha that's what kind of launched, and that's why. And that changed, I'm going to say it changed the world, because I think that the people that got money from that, that won the prizes, I think the money that uh, Tim Hortons had, that they put to their soccer programs for kids and their camps for kids, I believe that cup company that actually went in and said, oh, what do we do with this? We don't really know what we should be doing, but we do have, we have the technology now to actually do this and roll up the rim. Um, and I'll leave you with the last one, which is fulfilling relationships. So to trigger your ignorance again, um, I would like to know what you would think if you wanted to have long-term fulfilling relationships, what would you be doing? So I want you to think about that for a second. What would you actually be doing? So if you're having long-term fulfilling relationships, how many people in your brain, when I ask that question, thought about smiling? 
You did? Who did? Who else? Yes, a couple other people. Fantastic. So, and that is the answer. So they did longitudinal research for 30 years on people and found that people with not, those, not the half smile, the big smile. Can everybody give me kind of the big smile? That big, broad, teethy smile. Those people were happier, inspired more people, and had longer, more fulfilling relationships. So the end of all of this, what I'm hoping you can take is that your ignorance, be proud, stand proud that you're ignorant, right? Leverage the things that you can. Ask more questions about what if. Um, answer the question, um, what if I didn't know? What if I don't know everything about this? Um, how about starting with I don't know? More curiosity. So I hope it sparks something in you with your complex problems to understand that there's many ways of going at it, talking to other people, getting different perspectives, asking what if. So I hope that you do that. I hope that you smile more. I hope that you touch more. And I hope that you truly go out and find something small that can truly change the world. Thank you.